so in this video I'll be doing a voiceover just to show you guys how I'm acclimating to the new shop uh, I know I haven't been posting videos lately uh, it's been just crazy with the move and I haven't been able to document it uh, the process as we go along but um, I'll be posting more videos with voiceovers and uh, try to explain step by step on the, the future projects so in this video I'll be talking a little bit about the materials that I use to build a custom cabinetry like this in this case it's a custom vanity with a towel rack that's gonna sit alongside of it and uh, this is a pretty standard paint grade material when it comes to custom cabinetry in, in a shop. Normally we use hard maple with uh, MDF panels. Unless we're doing, uh, unless we're staining the panels or we're using some type of pattern uh, in, the, in the door panels, uh, we tend to use MDF for the center panels because it's very stable and it doesn't uh, uh, expand and contract as much as solid wood. So my method of working is I always try to do the hardest part first in a, in a cabinetry, in a build. So normally I start with the face frame which is going to dictate all the sizes of the doors and the boxes. Once that I have the face frame done uh, I move on to the doors which is the most time consuming of all the projects. Making doors it, it can take a little bit of time and it take, can take a, a little bit of finesse sometimes trying to uh, mill the wood and make sure that the wood is properly milled and properly uh, dry and uh, processed well. So once that I have the doors built uh, I know that at that point uh, most of the, the work it's done. Uh, then I move on to the boxes, which is just a matter of cutting uh, straight shit goods of three quarter inch pre-finished plywood. And normally I use half inch for the back of the cabinets. Another thing is when I make my doors, uh, normally I make them an eighth bigger uh, height and width, width and height. Uh, that allows me for to fit them properly uh, if there is anything uh, off square or I can uh, adjust them to the best fit possible. I've done doors to a specific measurement in the past and if something, especially on this type of application, an inset application, if something it's slightly off it, it makes it for you to either you're gonna have to make new doors or you're gonna have to make your tolerances for your spaces uh, much bigger so I just got into the habit of making everything slightly bigger then I can fit it to whatever the sizes of my tolerances are and normally I start uh, paralleling them I rip them from side to side first then I go on the height and um, I just trim them off to the specific measurement. So I have this laminate shims in a shop which it makes it for a great door spacers because they're very uniform in thickness and um, they're great to be fitting uh, when you're fitting doors to make sure that they're nice and spaced evenly. 
Another thing that you have to be very careful when you doing this type of application, the thick door, thick door application, it's your tolerances. Uh, you can't leave them too tight because they tend to bind in the middle. They tend to touch each other in the middle. So one of the things that you can do if you if you are planning on doing your tolerances small within uh, three thirty second of an inch, you can start beveling the inside. Uh, the, the, the the sides of the door. You can do the hinge side and where they fold in the middle, where they uh, close in the middle. You can do a slight three degree or four degree bevel in there, which it will prevent the doors from touching each other. Like I stated before, the doors are the most time consuming part of the whole project. So once that I have the doors built and sized and sanded on the surfaces, I, um, I edge sand them on the edge sander. You know, I sand all the edges, make sure that everything is nice and square and everything is going to be smooth. And I take them uh, once more to the vacuum table in combination with the fast tool, 5 inch fast tool sander just to get rid of the, all the little lines that get left behind from the white belt sander and among that I break all the edges all the uh, out, outside edges and the inside profiled edge of the door because uh, at that point they're pretty much ready to get painted So another thing that I do when it comes to a vanity like this, that it uh, has the two sides covered. The right hand side is going to be touching the wall and the left hand side is going to be touching the tower, uh, the towel rack tower. And um, so I pre-fit the, the face frame first. I screw them in place, make sure that everything is going to be marked where the screws, the screw holes are going to be. And then I take the face frame off and I spray the face frame separately. That just makes it for an easier work, so I don't have to mask. I don't have to mask anything. I don't have to protect the box. So uh, after the face frame is finished, I just put it back. I put a, a little tad of glue, and uh, I just put it back the way it was. So if you made it this far into the video, I'm going to ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel. That's going to let YouTube know that you guys um, are watching the content that I'm putting out and it's going to help me tremendously uh, in the channel. So for this cabinet that goes to the left of the vanity, on one side it's going to hit the wall and the other side it's gonna be a finish end so uh, what I do I glue up the face frame and I clamp everything together and let it dry and then I sand everything flush to make sure that it's gonna be a nice and uh, finish end on that side
make sure you follow the build and uh, I'll be posting a video of the finishing and assembling of this unit so you guys see how it's gonna come together and, and I might uh, do an install as well but I'm not uh, planning on installing this this project so I don't know if I can get footage of the installation so uh, anyway I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, thank you very much for watching